I've mentioned this before a long time ago, but I'm not really fond of traveling, specifically international travel, which is a little ironic because since moving to Japan, I've been doing a lot of international traveling, whether it be for cons, to visit family, or to see friends. Usually the destination itself is a lot of fun, but what I hate is the process of air travel. I hate the miserable North American airport experience, the sitting in silence for 12 hours with a sore butt and a dry face, the jet lag, the mad dash to connecting flights, and my crippling fear of dying. And yes, I know the statistics. I know that flying is the safest form of travel and that it is currently the safest it has ever been. But my personal biggest fear is being in the wrong place at the wrong time. So you could tell me that I have a one in one million chance of dying in a plane crash and I'd still go, so you're saying there's a chance. And usually the response is something like, oh, but I bet you're not scared of driving, which is far more dangerous. I am, actually. I mean, I still did it. I didn't like it, though. The astigmatism definitely didn't help. Anyways, my issue with travel is that when it goes good, it's great. And when it goes bad, it's a shit show. So I'd like to tell you all about my first trip to the UK that ended up being maybe a little bit traumatic. Oh, but first... If you're anything like me and you're also not the biggest fan of traveling long distances, then you might be interested in today's sponsor, Boxu. Boxu is a Japanese snack box that works with family businesses all over Japan to deliver unique treats right to your doorstep every month. No flight required. When you sign up for Boxu or give it as a gift, the very first snack box you'll receive is called Seasons of Japan and it includes a little taste of all four seasons. I've worked with Boxu before and I'm always surprised at their ability to curate a variety of snacks that I've personally never seen before. Some of the standouts for me in this box include the organic Genmai Cha tea, which has a delicious combination of sencha leaves and roasted brown rice. I love the inclusion of tea in every box and every single one I've had so far has tasted incredible, but this one is definitely my favorite. I also really liked the white chocolate infused freeze dried strawberries, both for its super cute appearance and its tasty fruity sweetness. But my absolute favorite thing in the box was this dondon yaki snack, which is a savory senbei fried and marinated in tonkatsu sauce. It was tangy, peppery, a little sweet, savory, crunchy, it was delicious. If you're looking for a good holiday gift for an adventurous snack enthusiast or yourself, then use my code EMMERICHU to get $15 off your first Boxu snack box. Link will be in the description down below. Didus and I were visiting the UK as a nice little holiday to see friends after finishing two back-to-back conventions, and our first stop was London. Our friends had warned us that hotels in London were usually really bad, but I booked a place that had glowing reviews when I was hotel hunting. It looked really nice from the pictures, and a lot of people seemed to have really good things to say about it. So imagine my surprise when we excitedly unlock our door, tired as hell from flying for 17 hours, and we walk into what looks like a windowless jail cell with a single bed. It looked nothing like the pictures. Why were there so many good reviews? Were that many people just lying about this hotel? Well, you know... As long as the beds are clean, we're really only going to use this place to sleep, right? We don't need a nice hotel room to enjoy London. (laughs) But Sydney, upon seeing the picture of our room, was so appalled at how much of a blatant scam it was, said, that's no way to start England. And she and Garnt very kindly booked us a room at the hotel they had been staying at. It was much nicer and their hotel breakfast was bomb. Thank you, Sid and Garnt. Also, they ended up doing some online digging about our first hotel and let me know that a lot of the positive reviews were in fact fake. So I was fooled, but it's okay. Just a bumpy start to the trip. It should be smooth sailing from here. Next stop, Brighton. I booked another hotel for our one night trip in Brighton and this one was nice, spacious, cozy, and clean. And it had glowing reviews that I'm pretty sure were real. So we made ourselves comfy, watched some live action One Piece and tucked in for a night of blissful sleep. I woke up in the middle of the night feeling a little restless, feeling itchy. I got up and stumbled into the bathroom and noticed there were a few itchy bites on my arm. There was another on my shoulder. Maybe a mosquito found its way into our room. But then I saw it. A fresh bump on my back. Surely not. It can't be. There's no way. I checked the mattress when we got here. And there it was. To my horror, 
two fresh drops of blood. Oh, shit. Hey, do you feel itchy anywhere at all? Uh, no. Why? I woke up and I have some bug bites. I think this bed might have the... <laughs> That's right, dear viewer. Our hotel room had bed bugs. Bed bugs! Little did I know that this was just a taste of the bed bug epidemic that would soon ravage Europe. Unfortunately for me, bed bugs aren't one of my biggest travel fears, so I started crying immediately. I called up the hotel owner, still freaking out, and he came over and refunded me on the spot and was super apologetic. But there were no other rooms available for the night, so who was there to come to our rescue once again at three in the morning? Sydney and Garnt. They had us leave our luggage and pajamas outside, gave us a change of clothes, and had us sleep in their guest room for the rest of the night. But I couldn't sleep. Because you want to know what's really fucked up about bed bugs? They inject you with an anesthetic when they bite you so that you don't feel it, which means you might not notice a bed bug bite hours or even days afterwards when it wears off. And I was starting to suddenly feel bites that I didn't notice before, and I was caught in a paranoid loop of wondering if I'd unknowingly brought them over to Garn's place. I could never forgive myself if I did that. I kept checking the bed sheets, checking my own body every time I thought I felt something, but there was never anything. And so the night passed and I didn't get a wink of sleep. These little bastards play some sick twisted mind games with you. In the morning, we nuked all our clothes in the dryer and inspected the contents of our luggage. Still jet lagged, even more sleep deprived and now horrified, we optimistically said, well, it really can't get worse than this. This trip can only go up from here, right? And for a while, it did. We traveled to Oxford, ate some more delicious English breakfast, tried Sunday roast for the first time, some classic fish and chips, and we got to meet some amazing people and make new friends and new memories. All good stuff, right? For our last day or so, we were back in Brighton. It was a cold, rainy, and windy day. Actually, to be honest, it was rainy and windy for most of the days we were in the UK, but it was extra windy today. We decided to head into town to get some last minute shopping done, and before we left, Sydney asked if I could return an item for her at a store that happened to be in the same mall that we were headed to. I was like, I'd love to do this very simple task for you. You've already done so much to help us out during this trip, it's the least I could do. So she put the receipt in the bag and we ordered a taxi. Right off the bat, as soon as we exited our taxi, we were assaulted by a nasty gust of wind. Frigid, piercing, the kind of wind that made you shut your eyes and fear that something was going to fly straight into them. <sighs> we should hurry and get inside the mall so we can return Sydney's... <coughs> That's right, dear viewer, I lost the receipt not even a minute upon arrival. I couldn't believe it. I felt like I was living in a Nichijou sketch. We checked and chased after every dirty stray receipt that came across our path, and none of them ended up being the receipt that got blown out of Sydney's shopping bag. Then I started getting into my own head a little too much. This is it. I'm a terrible friend. She's going to think I'm incompetent and stupid, and I can't even do this one simple thing without messing it up. She's never going to want to ask me to do anything ever again. I've been nothing but a burden and an inconvenience this whole trip, and I'll probably never be asked to come back again. Hey, don't let it get you down too much. It's just a receipt. It ended up not being a big deal, but I still felt bad. The rest of the day went fine. We got some shopping done, tried some savory pastries from this place called Greg's. The receipt thing just felt like the final little hiccup to finish off our trip, but we'd be able to return home tomorrow. Surely there won't be any more problems. On our last day, we decided to get some burritos for lunch on our way to the airport. Would you like some jalapenos? No, thank you. Would you like some jalapenos? Hmm. Yes. Ditus got food poisoning, like two hours before our flight. It was like the UK was giving us one final middle finger as a souvenir. I'm pretty sure he got it from the jalapenos, and ironically, I've been avoiding fast food jalapenos for years because I'd also gotten food poisoning from them once upon a time, so this sort of reaffirmed my aversion to them. But it was okay! We laughed off our bad luck in between Ditus's countless pooping breaks. This was just the cherry on top. And then our flight got delayed which meant we wouldn't be able to make it to our connecting flight in Dubai, which happened to be the last flight to Tokyo of the day, which meant we had to have an extra connecting flight added to our itinerary, which meant we had to get on three separate flights to get home, which totaled to 18 hours of flying, not including the layover time. Wild Ditus had food poisoning. 
Now, normally I don't mind flight delays all that much because I know there's nothing I can really do about them, but it's significantly more stressful when your travel partner is one bad turbulence bump away from pooping himself. We thought, wow, it really can't get much worse than this. This must be the cherry on top, but at least we're homeward bound. And then the actual worst thing happened. At the beginning of our second flight, we received news of a very sudden and unexpected loss. Obviously, I'm not going to go into any personal details, but as you can probably imagine, it was a genuine shock. It was as if the universe had decided to challenge our unwavering optimism. And instead of just another cherry on top, it gave us a whole Sunday made of just cherries. We just sat with this knowledge for the rest of the flight, trying to process it the best we could in between the layovers and the skies, and the remaining 12 hours felt like an eternity. And suddenly, the food poisoning, dead bugs, and various other travel mishaps we went through now felt like nothing. Insignificant. Minor inconveniences that really didn't matter. And even when we finally made it home, we couldn't even really feel relieved. Just kind of exhausted, to be honest. And for the record, we're doing okay now after taking some time off, so no need to worry. But I think it goes without saying, I still don't like traveling. I really don't want to end this video on a super depressing note, and I don't want the comment section to get too serious, so I invite you to tell me about your worst travel experience in the comments. Initially, I started scripting this video right after the bed bug incident, and that was going to be my short little Halloween video just about the bed bugs. But things just kept happening, and to be honest, I debated whether or not I should even include that last part in the video, but out of everything, it was the most impactful part for us when I recalled the whole trip so I thought it would be remiss to not at least mention it. Moral of the story is, don't go to the UK. I'm just kidding, kidding. I, I'm definitely gonna be back at some point. The real moral of the story is, don't eat fast food jalapenos. <laughs>